Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. Uh, before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the time that we have each morning to open your word, and we are thankful for this new week of studying in Daniel chapter 11. And we look forward to the things that you show us uh, that bring power and conviction in our lives, and we pray for one another. You know the struggles that we face. We ask, Lord, that uh, you can be with our family and friends, that your angels can watch over them, and that you can help us and them through the trials, that they can turn to you for help. Help us to understand the things we read. We know, Lord, that there's much we do not understand. So we just ask that you can correct us and guide us. And we thank you for all these things and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning again, everyone. Now, we have, uh, of course, been going through Daniel chapter 11, and uh, really, we spent a lot of time on verse 30, but now we've been working through uh, verses 31 to 36. And of course, uh, this is this passage in the spirit of prophecy where she talks about uh, much of the history taking place and in fulfillment of this prophecy will be repeated. And, and that is, she's talking about the prophecies in the 11th of Daniel. She says, in the 30th verse, a power spoken of that shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the Holy Covenant. So shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the Holy Covenant. So we spent a lot of time on that verse. And then she quotes verses 31 to 36. Scenes similar to those described in these words will take place. We see evidence that Satan is fast obtaining the control of human minds who have not the fear of God before them. Let all read and understand the prophecies of this book, for we are now entering upon the time of trouble spoken of. And then she quotes Daniel 12, verse 1 to 4. So this is the reason we're studying Daniel chapter 11, even though, you know, Colin uh, is, is sort of responsible for this series of studies, you know, saying that I needed to do this. And uh, that's why we, we started on this. But we had done, previous to this study of Daniel chapter 11, we had done a number of studies. One was understanding the foundation. And that series of studies was actually examining the foundation. We examined the foundation. We found that it was laid correctly, that the messages that came from FFA uh, were a solid foundation for understanding truth in these times and, and we did that of course after our disappointment so we went back we looked at the foundation this is what was done in millerite history by uh, james and ellen white looking back and seeing that the foundation was laid correctly and then we began to move forward in understanding the lines and of course to move forward means you have to again look back and look at at the foundation of the lines themselves how do we understand these lines how do we how do we draw a line? How do we take a story of scripture and create a line? And so we spent a lot of time looking at these lines. Now, the thing that helped us the most, I first was understanding the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, how those lines worked, and that we could see that when we when we took any story of scripture, that it followed this pattern, this pattern that's from Millerite history, and so we use the symbols. You know, the first angel arrives, it's formalized in power. The second angel arrives, it's formalized and empowered. And then the third angel arrives. And when the third angel arrives, there is going to be a falling away. And the third angel's message never becomes empowered. It does become formalized, uh, but not empowered. In all of the histories, in all of the lines, we never see an empowerment of the third angel's message. That's going to occur in our time. And it's going to occur, well, in connection with the close of probation and all those final events of Earth's history. So it's now each of these way marks also can be a line itself. So we saw that there was this big long line of from the creation, from the from the creation of the world uh, to the new heavens and the new earth, right? And and that we had all of these lines within them that each of these, you know, what we would call a line, it can sometimes just be a way mark and we zoom into it. Now, when we studied the book of Judges, 
we started to study in a way that I don't think that we had done before. Uh, we began looking at the Hebrew numbers, uh, not as much as we are even in, in, in Daniel chapter 11, but uh, we began doing that, looking at them as spans of time. And that can seem to people kind of odd. So they can say, well, you're taking this arbitrarily imposed Hebrew number from Strong's Concordance, and you're attaching to it a symbol of a span of time, especially applied in the present truth application. And, you know, what's the basis for doing that? Well, that basis, and we've, we have a study dealing with the symbolic use of numbers that we do on, on Sabbath morning. And, and the basis for that is, is something that's always been there. That is, when we look at a calendar date like 70 AD and we see in it some symbolism of the idea of of uh, judgment and probation dealing with the 70 years. Well, 70 AD is an arbitrary number. It's something that man created because he created a calendar and actually made a mistake in how he determined what 70 years in the year of our Lord would be, right? So if they had got it correct, 70 AD would have been, um, you know, 67 AD, right? That's just that they, uh, Accounted wrong. So people make these mistakes. Now, um, we have these calendars, Julian and Gregorian. We have these symbolic dates. Again, these are something created by man. Strong's numbers, something created by man. Now it's based upon, you know, alphabetically the words in, in the Hebrew scriptures. And, uh, so these numbers are, are given so that we can easily track them, even though if we don't read Hebrew. And also the Greek as well in the New Testament. And these were done by, by Strong in his concordance. And so these numbers have kind of become standardized. I mean, he could have done them a little bit differently. He could have chosen to number the words differently, but this is the way it is. So, so when we look at, um, the Strong's numbers, we're saying God had control in that. It's not something that even though man has done it, God can use it. And he does that with the calendars. He does that with all kinds of things because God ultimately is in control. Christ is the wonderful number. And so the foundation is not numerology. That is, we don't make decisions on our life based on numerology. We don't uh, believe that numbers are magical, that they're just to convey information and they can be an objective measure of something. So these are, these are things I think we have to consider, especially in the context of how these numbers have fit together, all of these different spans of time. And we saw this really clearly, like in the story of Jephthah, where we had, um, you know, we had the, the Capricars constant show up. We had the, the Shibboleth and all these different things uh, fit together in ways uh, that demonstrated the 30 years from uh, November 9th, 1989 uh, to November 9th, 2019. Uh, there was just so many things. And, and we see this in Daniel chapter 11. And, and most of these will apply to the present truth application, to the dates that occur in our history. Sometimes these numbers will apply uh, to the historical spans as well. And we could see words, you know, like, you know, time, uh, 6256, you know, 6 times 2 times 5 times 6 is 360. So you can see right in front of you, know, even for a time or the time of the end, all those types of things. Uh, we found that these are significant, that we can put these together and we can have a clear confirmation of what we understand from the text itself. So that is, we don't create because of numbers, we don't create dates. We, what we're doing is we're, we're, we're establishing something through God's word, uh, through the prophecies of scripture, through the stories, the histories. Ezra 7 to 10 has been a strong foundation. It's tied together all of these different lines of truth into this structure. And this structure is wheels within wheels. And so there's nothing arbitrary about it. There's nothing that's, uh, contrived. It's, it's just, Completely based upon 
the understanding of God's word. So when we finished off yesterday, we were looking at this one word in uh, verse 33. Um, I'm trying to see where it is here. Is it in verse 33? Oh, yes, instruct. So what were we, we saying about this word instruct? Are they that understand? So this is the wise among the people. And we just started putting in this present truth application. So we had in verse 31 and 32, um, we had just flip back there. So we, we had put this at the beginning of our lines in November 9th, 1989 to December 25th, 1991. Arms shall stand on his part. You can see how that would relate to Daniel 11, verse 40. Uh, B, we see this cooperation of America or the USA with the papacy, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength. We looked at the Edict of Theodosius in 391, and we tied that to 9-11 and the Patriot Act. So you can see we're moving to 9-11 there. And then shall take away uh, the daily, um, typifies the tide being turned against wokeism. So this is something that's still future in it completely, but it started to happen. And they shall place the abomination that make it desolate. Uh, this is going to be the image of the beast, uh, the church and state union, and such as do wickedly against the covenant. Uh, this is going to be uh, the Sunday law. Shall he, the papacy, the spiritual king of the north, that is the USA, corrupt by flatteries. And so we have to decide exactly how we're going to understand some of these things. But uh, I know we'll go through and correct things that are problems. Uh, but the people that know their God, and this is, uh, shall be strong and do e exploits. So we're going to say that the ones that know their God is the woman in the wilderness, 144,000. Uh, the faithful followers of God will remain faithful, preach the truth, win many true converts. That happened historically, and this is going to be the loud cry. And and we could say, you know, the 144,000 and, and all of the redeemed, but I just put the 144,000 there. And they that understand, that's the wise among the people. So among Seventh-day Adventism. So we have within Adventism, we have the foolish and the wise, right? And the ones that understand are the wise. So that's going to be the 144,000. And they shall instruct many. And the ones that they instruct, uh, many of them will be the, the, the faithful martyrs, right? They shall fall by the sword, by flame by captivity and by spoil. And there's four of these uh, steps. And so we can see historically, this would refer to uh, the persecution that happens in a progressive destruction of four. In, and then we can see in our history that this would refer to what is happening. And that's where we have to sort of, I put here 1844 to 1989, the four generations of Adventism. And then it says, now they shall fall, they shall be hoping with a little help. And but many shall cleave to them with flatteries. So we have flatteries once again. I think that was mentioned earlier. In the other part. Yeah. Where was that again? Yeah. By flattery. So corrupt by flatteries. And then some shall cleave to them with flatteries. So there's some things that we're going to have to look at with that. And some of them of understanding. That is the wise. Right. Uh, shall fall to try them to purge them to make them white so this is this purification process seen in daniel 12 verse 10 except in reverse order white purge and try I believe it's in the other order and anyway and at and even to or even at the time of the end so we're talking about that history in the historical application is millerite history in our time it has something to do with our history of course and that we haven't, uh, the, I, I think it would just be the, the messages that are repeated in our time. And it says, even at the time of the end, because it is yet for an appointed time. So that in Millerite history, 1798 to 1844. So now we, we wanted to look, so that's just the summary, but we wanted to look at this uh, word instruct. That's sort of where we were left. And I usually have a tool that I use, which yesterday, not yesterday, Thursday wasn't working, where I can parse the word because I was uncertain about the form of the word. So that word instruct. So let's go here. You know, it means it's, it's like to instruct someone to make them 
a disciple to teach them. So if we go here, just hang on, I gotta switch the screen for you. So if we look up the word instruct, <clears throat> and we look up it in Brown, Drivers, Briggs, um, there are different forms of this word. And, and this has a form which I'd never, I, I mean, it's one that's very rare, and it's this, this final one, Polel, and I was wondering, well, is this in the Polel form? So I'm, you know, familiar with these other forms. This one, I'm not sure uh, why I've never noticed that one, but it's just I'm, I've never seen forms. Now, when I looked it up, it's actually not in that form, right, because I didn't know what form it was. And when I looked at it, I, I thought it was in the Hifel form. And so when I look it up in Hebrew, you see here, right here, you can see it says, now the word is, is bien, and, but it's ya bienu, right? And so I thought, well, is, what form is that? That looks like a Hifel form. Uh, so they shall instruct. And so I looked it up in my scholar's gateway just to parse the word. So it is in the Hifel form. It's in the, it's a, or actually it's in the call form. It doesn't make sense because it's, yeah. So it's a verb. It's an imperfect third person. Now imperfect just means uh, shell, right? So it just means incomplete. Yeah. It's a Hifel form. Imperfect third person masculine plural. So they shall instruct. So it can mean to understand. It also can mean to cause to understand or give understanding and teach. So they shall instruct many. I know it's, uh, and, and we looked at the word many as well. So we wanted to understand this word many. Now, many doesn't mean all. It can mean a majority, but it doesn't always. It's different than the word some. So some is means more like few. So this isn't a few that are going to be instructed, but many that are going to be instructed. And so what it's telling us is that they that understand the, among the people. And so among the people themselves, this is Am. This is of the tribe. Right. So this is not the people in the sense of um, the Goyim. So we know that we have this word in Hebrew that's translated or two words that are translated as people. Goyim will sometimes be the nations. Sometimes it'll be translated as the Gentiles. And sometimes it's translated as people. But there's also this other word, Am, and that is if it's going to be used for God's people, it'll, it'll be Am. They wouldn't use Goy uh, or Goyim for God's people. And, and so God, you know, talked about there's this text where you say, you're not my people. That's lo ami in Hebrew. Lo means not. Um, those that were my people, ami, right? I have a friend whose name's ami. He's Jewish. Um, so his name means my people, right? The e at the end, that's the yod. That is, is what would be the possessive. It's my people. Because you could just have am, people. But if you say my people, that's ami. And in this case, this, this doesn't have ami. This is just among the people. And uh, if you look at this here in Hebrew, you'll see the form. It just says am. Um. So it just has singular. That's an ein and a mem, if you can see that, 5971. Okay? So when we say that they understand among the people, this would be God's people. That's the way that I would understand it. They are going to understand among the people, and they're going to instruct many. So this would refer to historically those groups of people that were uh, like the the the, the Waldenses, the Albigenses, the Lombards, uh, these different people that were spreading the gospel in that period of time of papal supremacy, right? And and there's going to be lots of persecution. They shall fall by the sword, by flame, by captivity, and by spoil. So there's always God's truth is always preserved. In our time, this would be, of course, uh, those that understand, the wise shall understand. Those are the ones that are going to be proclaiming the truths in our time. And that's why we're studying God's word. We want to be those that are going to be wise so that we can proclaim the gospel to the world. 
that's the whole reason that we're we're studying. We're not studying just so that we can be saved or so that we can know some things. We're studying because we want to spread the gospel. And this would relate to Dwight's study yesterday morning, uh, dealing with what true uh, medical missionary work is. Right, Because you can have medical missionary work that just tries to deal with the physical part of people, but we know that we actually address the whole person. And we could have a work that we think is the gospel, which is just like discussing the Bible, uh, just purely Bible study, but without addressing the needs of those around us. And so we know that in order to be a true medical missionary, as Christ was, we have to be converted. We have to have Christ's character. We need to understand the word. And we also need to care for the needs of those around us, whether they're uh, physical, emotional, mental, social, all those types of needs that people have. And Christ knew how to meet those needs. And it was never separated from the gospel. So true medical missionary work is connected to the gospel work. When we look at these numbers, instruct many, we have 995 and 7227. Now, if we add those together, you're going to get a number that's, say, 995. Nine, 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 I said 955 plus. You're going to get a number that's 8,222. If we look at this number, it's about 22 and a half years, right? So if you divide 8,222, if you divide it by 365, and a quarter, you're going to get uh, 22 years, 0. 0.5106. So you can subtract 22 times 365.25. So it's going to be 22 years and 186 and a half days. So what would that represent? 22 years and 186 and a half days. It's one shy number from away from uh, 187, ain't it? Yeah, well, and we know that, that it's actually 186 days from the first day of the first month to the 10th day of the seventh month, right? If you counted cardinally, right? Wow. But it's 187th day of the year is the day of atonement. So we can say then, uh, but we have two symbols, 22. What does 22 represent? Restoration. Of 220s. Restoration. Yeah, restoration. Now, now, we say 220, but 22 is actually the main number. 220 is just 10 times 22, right? Because the 22 comes from uh, the 11 generations to the flood and the 11 generations after the flood into entering into Egypt, right? That's that's where we first get the 22. It's an 11 and an 11. We also have that in the story of Joseph itself, where Joseph is 11 years from when he's uh, 17 and taken, you know, sold into slavery. And, and then, ain't, that, ain't that also the difference between 25, 20, and 2,300 days? Yeah, the 220 years. Yep. Yeah. So then we have that in the story of Joseph. So in the story of Joseph, there's going to be 22 years from his dream to its fulfillment. And the center of that, so it's 11 years and 11 years, is when he interprets the dreams of the butler and baker. And without interpreting the dreams of the butler and baker, uh, which is the center of that chiasm, he wouldn't end up being before Pharaoh and interpreting his dreams two years later. And then, of course, there wouldn't be his dream wouldn't have been fulfilled without without interpreting the dreams of the butler and baker. And then, of course, we have uh, uh, yeah, the 220 years. So in the story of Joseph, there's four periods of seven years. Uh, two of them are periods also together. So there's seven years uh, for Rachel or Leah and Rachel, and seven years of plenty and famine. They also represent periods of 14 years. In uh, when it deals with uh, the 2520 or Leviticus 26 for literal Israel, there's going to be four periods of 70 years, two periods of 140 years, and a period of 220, which same thing happens in the story of Joseph, except that 7, 7, 7, 7, 14, 14, and 22. So, so those are just multiplied by 10 in the story of Leviticus 26 being fulfilled for literal Israel. Now, when we go, so we got the 22 years and we have the number July 18, right? And and you could even say uh, July 18, 
2020 with the two, two. So you just don't have the zeros in there. Does that make sense? So this instructing of many is talking about the understanding of the July 18, 2020. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay. Yeah. So, so I think that's pretty profound that we could, we can do that. Now, if we take, so we know it's 22 years and, and sometimes we'll look at spans of time from November 9th, 1989. Sometimes we'll look at spans of time from September 11th, 2001. And I'm just using this here. I'm going to, you can't see what I'm doing here, but I'm going to, okay. That's what I wanted. Okay, I'm going to show you this here in a second. I'm just getting this set up. Now, this is the calendar converter, so hopefully you can see this okay. You can see September 11, 2001, so that should be clear for people. So we got September 11th, and what we're going to do is we're going to go 22 years. So that's simply I just go from September 11, 2001 to September 11th, 2023. Now, it's going to be 20 years. Obviously, that's September 11th. And then I'm going to count 187 days. And that's going to bring me to March 16th, 2024. So what's the significance of March 16th, 2024? You can see if I go back 8222 days, that's going to be September 11th, 2001. All right, so I've got these two dates here. You can see them down at the bottom here. I'll make this a little bit bigger. Oops. All right, so you can see these two dates. March 16th, 2024. So what's the significance of that? Okay, what about March 16th, 2019? Does anybody remember what the significance of March 16th, 2019 was? Seven years earlier. You might forget. I can't, this was... I can't forget. I can't remember right off hand. Okay, so when we were studying verse 30, it talked about uh, he shall be grieved, return, and have indignation. And so we added those numbers together. Uh, that was 3512, 7725, and uh, 2194. And we got this number 143 or 13431, 13,431. And then we counted that from June 7th, 1982 to March 16th, 2019. And then we added 490 days. And that brought us to July 18, 2020. Okay. And I drew out a chart of this uh, somewhere. I think I did. Um, did I? I know I drew one for, uh, yes, here it is. Okay. So I'll show you the chart. So it, it's part of this uh, structure, tying back the historical grieved, um, return and have indignation. Uh, we put those as 395. 410 and the Indignation 476 to 508 AD, right? So that's going to deal with the fall of Western Rome. And then we put from uh, John Paul II and Reagan in June 7th, 1982, we counted 13,431 days. And that brings us, just that count brings us to March 16th, 2019. And then we count 490 days, and that brings us to July 18, 2020. So this grieved return and of indignation gives us July 18, 2020, but it also gave us March 16th. It's just I didn't put that in there. I didn't. Uh, and, and we also saw that that 13,921 is the result of adding those two together, which which are all the digits of 391 and a half. Right. So just maybe I'll zoom in a bit on that part of it. So people don't have as big a screen. They can see that. So so 13,431 days brings us to March 16th, 2019. And we're saying that we have March 16th, 2024, which was three weeks ago or something like that. And that's going to be seven years to the day from March 16th, 2000 or not seven years, uh, five years to the day from uh, March 16th, 2019, right? So that was five years earlier. Now, five symbolizes which? What does five symbolize? So we got five years, March 16th, 2019. 
in March 16th, 2019, March 16th, 2024, five years apart, what does the five symbolize? I know this is a little bit of a of a puzzle to put it all together. Probably Would it be the five virgins? May that be wise as the wise virgins? Yeah, so the five wise and the five foolish. So it's a separating of the foolish and the wise, right? And we're, we're studying uh, the, ver- the very phrase uh, that we're studying is addressing those that understand among the people shall instruct many. So that's the wise that understand and they're going to instruct many. And if we count from 9-11, it's going to bring us to March 16th, uh, 2024. So just a few weeks ago. Now, whether this is significant or not, so when I go back to my videos, I have a video on March 16th, and so I'm going to show you this here and see if this works. So normally if in my videos you're going to see things like, I'll just go back here, the number of people that generally are viewing the videos, they're going to be roughly, you know, 50, 60, 40, 30, 20, 94, once in a while, I'll get some like 200, 247 views. But for March 16th, how many views did I get? And number 10, the symbolic use of numbers. And what does 10 symbolize? Well, this is one of my most viewed videos. I probably have about, well, I have 2,000 videos, let's say, on my YouTube page. And this would be in the top 10 of views. So there's 598 views. Is this instructing many? Is this a symbol? So 10 symbolizes universal, right? Can symbolize the world. But there's 598 views. And there's a couple of discussions on this video as well. So so March 16th, 2024 is happening in the midst of, I think it's going to be March 2nd that Jeff starts uh, doing presentations. I, I'm trying to remember the date that he first starts regularly doing presentations. Does anybody remember which date it was? Because I know it's going to be um, significant in connection with December 30th, but I think it's March 2nd. It should have been, um, anybody remember? 60 days, so that's going to be, yeah, right, 63 days after December 30th, so nine weeks. That was the number. So if we go back and we look at, uh, so he's going to speak on December 30th. So there's going to be one. I'm just looking at my calendar. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So right, March 2nd is when he's going to start uh, presenting with uh, the American and Canadian groups. Okay. So as Jeff is beginning to do that, so... Uh, if we're going to look at it, that that's 63. March 16th is uh, how many days after Jeff begins speaking? If it's 63 days to March 2nd, how many days to March 16th? 63 plus 14? Yeah, two weeks or 14 days, so 77 in total. Okay, so so March 16th is 77 days from when Jeff first uh, speaks after July 18, 1260 days after July 18. Now he's going to do start regular presentations um, on March 2nd, which is 63 days after. But if we go to March 16th, that's going to be 77 days after. And what we have here is we have a the foolish and the wise being separated, right? So we have people who are following Jeff. And, and I don't, don't mean to call people foolish, but if we understand our lines correctly, we know that to follow Jeff at now at this time would be a mistake. That uh, we we there's no way that that what Jeff is teaching uh, makes sense, considering what he taught in the past. It's it's a departure from what he taught, sadly. But we do have this March 16th date. Now, as far as what uh, was taught in this, this is going to be dealing with Samuel Snow's letters and the 2018 prediction before midnight. So, so um, that's that's going to be the topic of that study, going back 
to, you know, it's going to address uh, the parallel between what happened in 2018. And this is something that Jeff is rejecting. So Jeff is rejecting all of this light uh, regarding the Levitical chiasm and July 18 and Ezekiel and uh, Josiah Litch's prophecy and how they point to July 18, 2020. And, and also Samuel Snow's letters. He would have to reject the prediction before midnight. He would have to teach that all of this is error. Now, Jeff is often inconsistent in what he's saying, which is one of the things that should help people recognize that it doesn't really make any sense uh, because he will, he says he's rejected certain light, but yet he still uses some of it. So he picks and chooses what he likes, uh, but rejects other things. And, and this has kind of been pointed out to him. He doesn't really have an answer for that. So I do want to put this in here, this instructing many. So when we put the spread, the light of truth in our time, this is the message of July 18, 2020. And that is, I'm going to put uh, a footnote here, just addressing all of these points. So anybody have questions about that? You have problems with what I've said? You want to put this in the footnote? So if we have H995 plus H7227, Construct any. This equals eight two two two, and which equals one hundred and eighty seven days and twenty two years. Because that's how we we did it. We went from September eleventh. That is from September eleventh, twenty two thousand one, to March sixteenth. 2024. This is 77 days after the 1260 days from uh, July 18, 2020. If that makes sense. And of course, we can see uh, 187 days in 2022 years. A any questions? So I think that's pretty profound myself. Oh, you can't see what I'm looking at here. So I put in the footnote. Typed down there at the bottom, footnote number 37. It's right at the very bottom. So a lot of symbolism in there. And, and a whole, whole lot of little coincidences, right? Yeah. And it's going to be uh, five years after March 16th, 2019. And that's going to be in the footnote 33. Now, hopefully, well, I'm going to have to probably change that when the footnotes change when I do the paper, but I'll, I'll try to remember that. Maybe I'll put this in red so I see it again in the future. <clears throat> okay, because that footnote will change once I edited this paper and put it into a whole whole paper with all the explanations. Some of the footnotes I'll end up putting in the body of the text body of the paper yeah so there's a bunch of things that fit together with all of this symbolism of the wise the foolish the instructing of many um and things that we already have understood about this passage oh another thing about 77 days so this is this to me is just a personal note but 77 days is so I'm just going to go here, show you this. And I, I'm not going to need to put this as a footnote because I always remember it. But if you take 77 days, if we multiply it by, now this would apply to 77 weeks, which we're going to look at later on. But 77 times 168. 168 is the number of hours in a week. So in 77 weeks, for instance, uh, there will be 12,936 hours. And that was my home address when I was a kid. So when I think about 77 days or 77 weeks, I think about this, this here. And we, we had examined that when we were looking at the story of judges. So 77 days, obviously it's, it's short for 777 days. And in, in 77 weeks, this is a period of 539 days. And what's 539? Me, me and Ryan were just. Yeah. What's that? McDonald's. 
Uh, I'm saying, uh, is it not uh, the time that uh, Babylon mm -hmm. fell? Yeah, so it's the year that Bob Babylon falls. On October 13th, 539 BC is when, that's the date that Babylon falls. That's when uh, the army goes into the city of Babylon. So there there might be more about this this symbol that, that I haven't seen yet, but, but 77 weeks uh, does show up in our line. And I'm trying to remember now where it was. Oh, that's where it was. So if we go from, so let's see if I can do it this way. I'll just use this calendar converter. We're going to have in 2020, we're going to have this 100 days of prayer. So if people remember that the Seventh-day Adventist Church has 100 days of prayer, March 27th, 2020. And it's going to be an inclusive count of 100 days. So 99 days later, at the end of July 4th, you're going to have the 100 days of prayer end, right? So you can see that in here. There's the March 27th. Now, if I count uh, from July 4th, 539 days, that brings me to December 25th, 2021. So from the end of that 100 days of prayer, we would have an inclusive count because this is counting cardinally. But if we counted from the end, there's going to be seven weeks uh, to December 25th, 2021. So 77 weeks, I think, is interesting. So we, we know how it connects also uh, July 4th, 2020, and we count uh, 187 days from July 4th, an inclusive count. So we're going to go 186 days. That's going to bring us to January 6th, 2021. So So we already had that. Right. And then we're going to have the 10 days of prayer end. And that's going to be one of the divisions of the 777. So you're going to have uh, January 16th and it's going to be uh, 343 days to because um, if we go here like this, so we go January 6th, we go the 10 days of prayer, right, which they're going to do as a cardinal count. And so when the 10 days of prayer end, that's going to be 343 days to this date. So can we see how this is all kinds of a puzzle? I have these other dates in here, but dealing with this July 4th all the way up to December 25th, this this all fits into this puzzle. So that's 77 weeks. It's just it's kind of an aside, but that's part of this structure. And so the fact that we have these other 77 days, so I'm going to put those 77 days in there that's going to bring us to when jeff speaks and then there's 63 days to march 2nd when he then begins his regular presentations and then that was going to tie us into okay so the other date i can put in here is from july 4th there's going to be 14 days to july 18th so we can see that there is this july 4th and this is representing the church's ending of their 100 days of prayer. There's going to be these two weeks, these 14 days, right? You can see that there. And then we're going to have the same thing here. We're going to have uh, Jeff. So Jeff is paralleling here. So there's the 63 days from there. And then there's going to be 14 days to March 16th. So can we see that Jeff is paralleling? Uh, the church with those 14 days. Does that make sense to people? So we've got the 77 weeks and we have the 77 days. 77 weeks, there you can see the 539 for the 77 weeks. Hopefully that makes sense to people. I mean, there's there's more to it than that, but uh, we'll, we'll probably sort some of this other stuff out later. There's a lot of really sig significant numbers in here, which I think is interesting. Numbers that are on the charts. And part of history, you know, like 476, the fall of Rome, dealing with the end of that 100 days of prayer, if we count from this March 16th, 2019 date. Okay, so hopefully that's not too confusing for people. Okay, so we have, um, they don't understand the whys, the 144,000 among the people. Now, I wanted to look at uh, this 7919. So again, we have these numbers. If I divide that by 365 and a quarter, 
It's going to be a period of 21 years and 249 days. So if I counted from September 11th, 2001, that would give me May 18th, 2023. I don't know of anything significant about May 18. The only thing is a symbol. It, it does have uh, 185 or 815 if you read it backwards. It is on the Mayan calendar. Pope John, sorry, it's Pope John Paul II's birthday too, but I don't remember what year. Okay. Well, yeah, he wasn't born in 2023, but, but yeah, so we got that. Uh, there's some other symbols too. Um, the Mayan calendar is, is the last three digits are 10, 10, 0. And the biblical date's 27th day of the second month. But anyway, I'm not sure if that's where we would put that span of time or if we put it from some other place, but this understanding among the people, um, of course, the people is 5971. Those together are 13,890. It's 31 days less than that span from June 7th, 1982 to July 18, 2020. So I'm not sure if that's significant. I mean, that just brings us basically to June 17th, 2020. I don't know if June 17th, 2020 is important or not. So it's just me kind of looking at some things there. So there might be some other dates that we'd have to consider. But anyway, for now, um, let's go and look at this again. So we have they that understand, that's the wise, um, among the people, uh, 5971 Christians, Seventh-day Adventists shall instruct many. So we have that footnote there, message of July 18, 2020. Now, one of the questions about July 18, 2020, as a message, if we're going to say that this is the message that is going to be presented. So Seventh-day Adventists after 1844, what is their message going to be it, prophetically? What is it that they're going to, to focus on? Are they going to ignore October 22nd, 1844? Because it's a disappointment, right? Right. But they're not going to ignore it, are they? The 2300 days ending in 1844 in connection with the sanctuary is going to be the foundation and central pillar of Adventism. Now, one of the things that Jeff says is he says that July 18 is a disappointment, right? Yes. Okay. And and he tries to compare it to the first disappointment. Is that correct? People yes. know. That. Okay. But yet it's an error. Was the first disappointment an error that needs to be rejected or needs to be no. repented? So, I mean, and I don't agree with him that it parallels the first disappointment. I think it parallels the second disappointment. I think November 9th, 2019 parallels the first disappointment. The arrival of the second angel's message, which is going to be the message of July 18. So it doesn't make any sense. But one of the things we have to say is even though we have all of these other truths, the 2520, Daniel 11, verse 40 to 45, all of these parallels of history in these lines. The one thing that we have to recognize is that July 18, 2020 is going to be a part of our message um, because it, it's in a sense, um, it, it's, it's the message of our experience. And why is that important? If we're going to be presenting a message to the world and we downplayed July, July 18, we were embarrassed by it. Um, would we would we be able to proclaim the gospel? Because isn't the gospel about our? I think experience? we should put pride aside and just try to see. Yes, our experience, and we can't deny our experience. And, and that's unless that's we want to say everything that we learned up to a certain point is has been falsehood. So God deceived us. I don't think so. No, and and one of the problems I had right from the beginning after July 18 is there were people that were embarrassed by it. And, and I wasn't embarrassed by it. I wasn't in, embarrassed that our prediction failed. And, and they wanted me to repent of it. Well, the only reason I could see that people wanted to repent of it is they wanted to distance themselves from it. And they, they, they um, tried to sell it as the humble thing to do would be to admit that you were wrong about July 18, 2020, 
and set aside your pride and confess your sin of predicting that date in the first place. So they they tried to give it a spin that it was actually humility to reject July 18 and pride to continue to believe in it. So was it pride that that caused the disciples to believe that Jesus was crucified or was resurrected? Was it pride that led the Seventh Day Adventists, James and Ellen White, to say that they that you know October 22nd, 1844 was a valid date? Or was that humility? Is that submission to God? Humility in that sense. To me, it's just submitting to what God has done, because God is the one responsible, not us. If if I thought it was me, uh, then maybe I might have had this sense of of well, I made a mistake, but I never took it that way. To me, this was a message from God, and God. If anybody was to be embarrassed which I don't think God would be, but I mean, it would be God, not me, because I didn't, I didn't attribute this to me. This, this was a message from God and it was meant to humiliate us, humble us. Yeah. So, so I believe, you know, that, that that was to reject that message would be rejecting a message that was meant to humble us. So we have, um, so hopefully that, that part of this line is clear that they, that understand that is the wise 144,000 as a symbol among the people, among Seventh-day Adventists. That is, this is a group among Seventh-day Adventists. Shall instruct many, spread the light of truth, the message of July 18, 2020. And this parallels the history of what, what happened during the time of the papacy, the martyrs. Yet they, the faithful, shall fall by the sword, by flame, by captivity, and by spoil. Now, we're saying that that represents, of course, the persecution under the Catholic Church, but it represents all the persecution that happened in the, the, those four, the first four churches, right? We, we would have to agree that it, it does expressly refer to the 1260 years, but it also can refer to that entire period of persecution. It's a progressive destruction of four. But specifically, this one is addressing the 1260 years from 538 to 1798. And so we can take that and symbolize the four generations of Adventism. That is, you know, we, we can parallel that. But it also must apply within this movement itself. Now we have, of course, some numbers there. And I'm going to look at those. And why is it not working? It was my share thing had locked up. I couldn't look at anything else. Oh, there we go. So the numbers that we have, I'm going to look at them individually this time. So we're going to have, uh, they shall fall by the sword. Um, well, I guess I could put those two together, but I could just look at the sword itself. 2719. Okay. So when we analyze a number, sometimes I just look at it in number empire. Now this is the 397th prime number. So that's interesting. 397th prime number. Um, so that's the word sword, which is really means war. And then we have 3782, which is the word fall. So fall by the sword. And that together gives us 6,501. Yeah, 6,501, about 18 years. 17, 17 years and 292 days. Okay, so let's see what this brings us. Okay, so that brings us to June 30th, 2019, if I counted 6,501 days from September 11th, 2001. I don't know of anything in particular about June 30th, 2019. I mean, the symbol there is, of course, 630. It's going to be um, <clears throat> a month prior to roughly to the rebellion at Baal Peor. Um Trying to think if that's the end of our camp meeting in Alberta. Can't remember what date that camp meeting was. I know it was the end of June. It was like June 23rd. So that would probably be the last day of the camp meeting in Alberta. So this is the camp meeting where Tess is um, uh, presenting that there's not going to be a Sunday law. So this is where I first heard this was at this camp meeting. Yeah, so that's going to be the camp meeting. 
So that's the day. I remember that day quite well, June 30th, 2019. So this is in Alberta. So if we're going to take this first one and we're going to apply it to this movement, we're going to just take shall fall by the sword. That's going to bring us to uh, June 30th. So I, I'm going to put this in here because I think that is actually quite significant. So as a footnote, so that's H. Yeah, I, I think it fits too. Like I was thinking about the great cleaver of truth with a sword. Well, this is the great cleaver of truth separating from falsehood. Like that's pretty blatant. I don't, I don't recall it. Than that you, or something. You, you there, Angela, when know, I was really sleep, sleep, sleep cried. Yeah, I was there. I met her and all that, and, and uh, everything seemed skewed. Like what I did here seemed really skewed. I was so puzzled. Like what is going on here? You know, like yeah. I was such and so in shock. I didn't. I remember. I remember going up to her once and trying to present what I thought and what I believed, and she just shot me down. Oh, that's a conspiracy. This and. Blah, 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 you're a flat earther and a couple of that. And I just thought, I, <laughs> I just thought, this is hopeless and I walk away. Yeah. Yeah. So it was actually on that date that we kind of figured out what she was talking about. So this is, so at that camp meeting, which went a week, this idea that there was no Sunday law, it was on Sunday morning. And this is the Sunday. Put that in there. Uh, this is where, People are kind of figuring out where she's coming from. So we're, we're sitting around talking that morning. I remember it quite well. And we're trying to make sense out of what had happened at the camp meeting. And uh, so so I remember it, it very well. So Tess is teaching there's no Sunday law. This is Alberta camp meeting. Um, so I think that's that's interesting. So I just need to put the number of days. So that's. Six five zero one days from nine eleven to okay. <clears throat> so we can see that this is if we deal with the sword, she'll fall by the sword. This is a war that's going on. Now what about the flame? So we have another number here, uh, three eight five two. Now that by itself can be used as a period of time. And it's going to be 10 and a half years. It's going to be 10 years and 200 days. So I know our time is, is almost up here. Um, so we're going to come back to this tomorrow. You know, and I'm, I'm going to draw a chart out of, out of these things. So put these dates on a chart. Just trying to figure out where this 10 years would be from. 10 years, 200 days, almost 11 years. Yeah. Okay. A any final thoughts? I, I think we're getting somewhere here with these numbers. Any questions? Uh, regarding the flame, I just put <laughs> Malachi 3, 1 through 5, purging with fire, right? Okay. He purges his people with fire. Yeah. So so I think we have to connect that that somewhere in that history. But, you know, I'm trying to figure out uh, this, this span of time, 3, 8, 5, 2. I mean, it looks familiar to me. I'm going to have to think about that. So anyway, we'll come back to this tomorrow. Okay, let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we are thankful for the things that you revealed in your word this morning. And um, we know, Lord, that uh, we have sorrow for those who have rejected light, precious light that could bring them closer to you. And uh, we pray, Lord, that we cannot reject the light that you give us, that we can go towards the light, that our sins may be exposed. We pray for one another. We pray that you can help us through our trials and difficulties to trust in you fully, in spite of what we see in ourselves and what we see around us. Forgive us our sins, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen.